Good morning, everyone, and welcome to the Pivot Boss pre market video for Friday, January 28th, 2022. I am Frank Ochoa, aka Pivot Boss. Here's a look at the daily time frame of the ES. You'll see right here, we've had quite the sell off here throughout the month. We still have, including today, two days left. Uh, Monday would be the last trading day in the month. But already, a 600 point rotation from 4,800 to 4,200. And uh, it has been straight down this month. Uh, one thing that we'll uh, be looking for here is for some sort of failure of range expansion early next month. Uh, the fact that we've sold off this much, we've now developed a very clear range at these lows. This range right now is an energy building range, especially if you look at it in the lower time frame, like a 60 minute time frame. And expansion from this range could be significant. Uh, whenever it occurs, if it's to the downside, we could be looking at one more move in February before we start to see perhaps a recovery here back above. So again, uh, keeping an eye on the boundaries of this range and until price can really push back above the top end of the range, 44, 46 is, 44, 50, uh, we still have a very clear downward bias uh, ahead of us. So uh, from an intraday perspective, that trading range is great because now after bouncing off the lows here we could see a move back toward 43.44 and uh, a bit higher so again we could be looking at a rotation back up within the range but until proven otherwise range bound uh, and awaiting expansion if we take a look here at the NQ the NQ has also developed a range at the lows again not a super narrow range but a range that is very well put together in the intraday time frame uh, again ever since the FOMC key level was released here we've had weakness uh, down away from that level and we continue to hold at the bottom of the significant uh, decline and so right now we are holding below the quarterly low below last year's closing value so there could be an opportunity there to to swing this bank thing back up but we haven't seen it quite yet again uh, the market structure still suggests uh, a clean downward trending market structure so we could see another round of weakness here early next month again dropping down to the next zone below would take us to 12.2 12.207 is the previous year's low previous year's midpoint is about 485 or so so we're almost there here if you start to give that up uh, in tremendous fashion here if you can't get back above that that 485 zone soon we may be headed all the way back to 12.2 so again keeping an eye on this scenario as it develops but right now range bound we may see a bounce higher within the range with a shot at say 14.2 and maybe as high as 14.4 but we are range bound so back and forth within the range until expansion occurs if we take a look here at crude oil this one's up another two percent today incredible strength out of crude oil uh... it just does not stay down for long any pullback is a buying opportunity still uh... A bit of a doji day in the previous session and now pushing through almost to the highs uh... of the previous sessions range we have now reached the 50 percent extension of the key range that we marked up which is uh, that 87 and change there and now the last upside target to reach per this key range is the 9603s and as long as we continue to stay above the top end of this key range here which is 7923 we have a shot for more upside again two days left in the month we have a higher value relationship on the pivot range heading into next month uh, so theoretically speaking, we can pull back into this pivot range early in the month and see a continuation toward 96 up ahead. Let's take a look now at Bitcoin. Bitcoin right now up 3.8%. Uh, still holding though. We have our rejection day early this week. Right here is the midpoint and it's been holding in a range. Uh, very similar to the ES and the NQ. Uh, the major difference is uh, the size of this rejection here downward first but this range right there very very clear very narrow and typically speaking uh, if it's going to be bullish here you would hold this midpoint and then start to break higher through this pivot high uh, however 
in a downward trend, you tend to see this type of behavior and then it fails hard. You see that type of behavior and then it fails hard. Or you see this here and it just can't get going. So in a downtrend, this type of price action here can tend to happen. And then if there's an inability to get going to the upside, any participant that bought in here will tend to liquidate and then you see uh, a stop run that occurs. So we could be looking at another round of weakness up ahead for Bitcoin. And again, that 32,855 is not quite the low. You still have down to 29 to 30 to hit the bottom end of that range. And then you have the 25K uh, level. That's the major CLVN there. That might ultimately be the spot to buy 25 to 26K here for a rotation back up. All right, let's take a look here at Ethereum. Ether futures here showing very similar price action to uh, Bitcoin. Again, right here you can see that a failure to hold that mid would open up another rotation down. Kind of after this bounce, it's trying to hold and then it fails. Uh, this bounce, it tries to hold and it fails. So right now, again, if there's a failure to hold that 2300 level or so, that could begin to open up some downside uh, up ahead. Now, how much more downside? Very similar to Bitcoin here. We do have significant key level down below. 1700, 1750 would provide significant market structure. Uh, if we do get one more rotation down into that zone, it'd be a hard to pass that area up as a buying opportunity as just returning it to value from those levels is a near double. So again, that could be a tremendous opportunity if we see one more leg down. All right, that is it for now. We'll see how this plays out heading into the rest of the session. Good luck, trade well, and I'll see you in the trading room. Take care.